we've got a piece of 4140 chucked up, nice and good in the vise. So the first cut we're going to do, quarter inch, four flute, we're going to start at 3056 RPMs, far more precise, frankly, than we need to. And we're going to cut across 75 thou width of cut, 200 thou, 0.2 inch depth of cut. We're going to use coolant through the rest of it. You want to start with coolant now. Don't change things up. Don't swap tools into a different tool holder or change the way the vice. Don't take for granted the variables that you can change that will influence the outcome here. G01 X, we'll just go all the way across. Negative 0.25 should get us there. Feed rate of 9.2. Great. Great. Spectacular surface finish. Okay, as you can see on the end of my scribe, you can see we're making a real chip. And that's, again, the most important thing I want you to take away from this whole video series is make a real chip. Now we start zigzagging. We, we're comfortable with that as a base cut. 3500 RPMs and same chip load per tooth. So all we do this time is instead of 9.2, it's 10.5. Again, sounded fine looks fine and the truth is I'm not really too worried about about this because we're way under our horsepower limits and we know we're taking a real chip and we have a narrow width of cut so we really shouldn't run into problems per se I think what you may start to see is if we do have a problem might be chatter or chip finish just if we're going too fast so let's keep going up the process here now we're going to keep 35 the same. All we're going to do is increase to 14 inches a minute, which increases that chip load. <laughs> Still looks great. Absolutely great. Um, great time, though, to pause and mention we're just taking a manual slot across, and I'm fine with that for this example. But again, remember all of the variables at the hand, and don't use this to get a zigzag feeds and speeds, and then assume you can go run an adaptive tool strategy in your CAM software, and this is perfect. If you're going to do that, maybe do this to get in the ballpark, but you need to do your zigzag with that actual cam part or a small portion of it. You don't, you don't have to do a ton of cutting, but it will change it. it will, high speed machining will change the engagement of the cutter and the way it acts and the ramp in and outs and so forth. So don't assume slotting equals good to go adaptive roughing path, tool path, breath speeds and speeds. They, they should be somewhat close, don't get me wrong. But again, just it's, if you make an assumption, know you're making an assumption. 4,000 RPMs, want to keep that chip load at 1 thou per tooth, which means 16 inches a minute. Coolant on. Great. That was telling. It Honestly, I hope you can hear it on camera, it started to sound different. Different isn't necessarily bad, but definitely different. One of the things I'm also noticing is that chip now has some color in it. And that's exactly what we want when we're cutting steel. You want that straw color. If you get to a dark brown or a blue, yes, that's getting a lot of heat in the chip, but if it's that hot, you're also building up heat in the workpiece and maybe in the cutter. So that straw color, which honestly looks like what we were at right there. I see a little bit of blue in um, a couple of the little spots, if you will, but that might just be perfect. So we may find that this next one pushes us too far. Let's try. 
So now we're going to increase, keep the RPMs at 4,000, increase to 20 inches a minute, which gets us to the 1.25 thou chip per tooth. Still good service finish. Uh, I'm fine with that actually. 4,500, 22.5. Did you hear that? Just the tiniest bit of chatter and you see real amounts of blue in that chip. Too much heat. So that's kind of the limit. We're not at the limit of the machine or the spindle or the horsepower, we're, but what we're doing is finding the right limit to make that chip and make it reliable. Because remember, at the 30% width of cut, what we're trying to do is get a good, reliable, safe, um, unattended, good surface finish type recipes. The reason this method works so well is because you're isolating the variables. You're only changing one thing at a time, and that's really important. There are nine things that, you can, that can go wrong that have a diagnosis with them. Let's go through those. If you're getting chatter, that means your RPMs are too high or your feed is too low. If you're getting a squealing sound, same thing. RPMs are too high, or feed rate inches per minute is too low. If you're getting blue chips for steel, but there's too much heat in that chip, RPMs are too high. Rumbling of any kind in the machine means your chip load is too high. You're trying to take too much cut per revolution. If the cutter is getting pulled out of the holder, same thing, chip load's too high. Or you haven't tightened your cutter down, frankly. If you're getting inconsistent or chunky chips instead of a normal, relatively equally sized curled chip. Again, chip load too high. On your tool, if the flutes are getting burned, RPM's too high. If your tool flutes are getting chipped, you can actually see them. They're little, you know, dents and imperfections along the flutes. That means you're recutting chips really bad. Don't do that. And lastly, if you're chipping on the corner, uh, the very tip of your uh, end mill or tool, chip load too high. But we're actually not done. Those nine symptoms we just diagnosed, well, if we're getting heat in the chip, that means our RPMs are too high. So we need to go back to 3,500 RPMs. But we don't have to stay at that chip load. What we've now done is isolated the one variable of RPMs. That's got to stay at 3,500. Let's start increasing the chip load. So we can cross out the recipes at 4,000 above. Those aren't going to work. And let's just jot down some recipes here for 3,500. We know 3,500 works at 1 thou per tooth. Let's step up to 1.25 thou, 1.5 thou per tooth, and see where we hit the limit there. Okay, no problem at all with that. Not only no problem with that, but I actually really, oops, I actually really like the look of that chip. So let's keep going. Folks, this is awesome. You gotta look at that chip. It's a good chip. There's no heat in it. It's con their consistent size. I'm, I know I'm only showing you one here, but uh, this is awesome. So that was 1.75 thou per tooth. Let's go with 2 thou per tooth, 28 inches a minute. Folks, this is just awesome. I grabbed a sheet of paper to co collect a bunch of these chips. Just beautiful chips, seriously. And this is so funny because this is exactly where I had a major weakness as a machinist, where I used to think I was scared of big chip loads per tooth and I would usually try to use RPMs to gain speed. And here we're keeping RPMs constant, increasing the chip loads. So we're taking a more aggressive cut when it comes to the stress put on the actual flutes of the cutting tool. But the tool here is clearly, not only is it not having a problem, but we're gonna keep going. All right, folks, 2.25 thou per tooth chip load, which is 31 and a half inches per minute. Still 3,500 RPM.
Chips look great. Surface finish is still great. Keep going. Folks, this is awesome. Take a look at these chips. Here's the awesome thing. You're going to have so much more confidence as a machinist in your part quality, in your reliability, and the in the ma maximizing the use of your machine, maximizing the value in your tooling and the tool life. This is such a confidence builder to understand this. These chips are beautiful. They're consistent. We, we know right now that we're pushing up the chip load. So now we know to look for the warning signs that our chip load gets too high. Listen for that rumbling. See, make sure the cutter is not getting pulled out of the tool holder or the collet. Make sure those chips stay consistent. You can see here these chips are, I mean, this is like perfectly consistent. I'm torn because we can keep going and we can push this. These chips aren't that straw color yet. They're getting hot. I can tell that because I'm sticking my hand in there to catch them when we when we make each cut. But they're not quite getting that straw yet color, which is what I'd be looking for uh, as another warning sign just due to the simple heat, even though normally that's an RPM driven thing. We're, we're going to hit some limit here. Um, but the points wasn't so much to dial in the limit of this tool, but rather to show you the recipe for how to do it. And folks, I'm sitting here thinking, Man, if you had told me a good recipe for a quarter inch end mill would have been 42 inches a minute, which is three thou per tooth at 3,500 uh, RPMs, which I think is about 229 surface feet a minute, I would have never thought three thou per tooth was good. And here's the awesome thing. We're still gonna do the 80% width of cut video, but this 30% width of cut is a much safer cut, but we're still getting a decent material removal rate. Now, you do need to remember, as you increase your chip load per tooth, you're going to make that chip bigger relative to the size of the gullet or relief or whatever you want to call it in the tool itself. So you still need to focus on chip evacuation. You can see here the chips are flying off fine. The coolant system is doing its good job. So we're not at that problem yet, but there is a theoretical limit for sure. So super exciting, folks. Great.